Hello, and you should be you should be seeing my screen here right now. Are you seeing that okay? We've got it. Excellent. Well, good afternoon. Well, it's afternoon for me. I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. I realize this, it's still morning for you all. Thank you for joining us today. So we're going to focus on using reference solutions, certainly for, for retail businesses. So if, if your business requires or you need information about other businesses, perhaps because that might be who you work with. We have that information. We also have information for consumers. So if, if that would be better data for you, uh, you can certainly get access to that kind of information through the database as well. The nice thing about our various modules, you'll see we have nine of those here. They all search the same way. Obviously, a little different criteria would be used to produce your results, but the processes, the tools that I'll share today are all the same, no matter which of these modules you might choose to use. And I'll really focus on the U.S. new businesses, the U.S. consumer lifestyles, and if we have time, our U.S. new movers, new homeowners information. These two being similar in nature in that they're both focused obviously on consumers. I do wanna give you a little tour of some materials that you may choose to take advantage of and they're under the learning center here. So let me open this page for you. First of all, our contact information is here in several spots. So you can always either reach out to the library or contact us and we'd be happy to assist you in building a search or answering questions. The information I wanted to show you is under this marketing and training material tab. And it's these database overviews. So we have one that is for all the business related modules of which there are several there, one for consumers, one that's inclusive of all, and then those that are broken down specifically based on each and every one of those modules. So you can certainly take advantage of that information. It would provide you with the ABCs of building a search and using some of the tools that I'll introduce today. We also have a data dictionary listed down here, one for business, one for consumer. If you had a need to perhaps learn about a particular element that's in one of our records, you could probably find your answer there. Most of it's pretty self-explanatory, but you might be able to also uh, glean some additional information there. And I'm gonna go back here to my primary dashboard. You'll always know, and Leah did give you the route that you would take to get into the reference solutions database. Once you've entered your library card number, if you're doing this from home or office, you would see this homepage. You know that you're logged in when you see the San Francisco Public Library logo here. And we do have a couple of other tools I'd like to show you. If you're an app user, we do have an app. Within that app, you would have access to the U.S. Business Database as well as the Consumer Lifestyles Database. Once you've uploaded that app, you can then launch it. It'll ask you to put in your zip code. It does an automatic 25-mile radius around your zip code. So it might pull in various libraries. You would simply scroll through that list and then click on the library that's yours, enter in your library card number and you'd have access. And then last but not least, we do give you the ability to create a personal account. We were told by, and that's why we rolled out this particular feature, we were told by our library partners that not in every situation did patrons necessarily need to be able to download information, which you can certainly do, many people do it, but you could also, if you would rather, you could save it. So once you've registered, and that's the, that's the key, you wanna register first, then you can log in and you can save any of your searches that you might do through these eight modules. There's one that 
is an exception to that rule. Isn't there always one exception to the rule? That would be the jobs and internships with this particular module. You can email yourself results. You just can't save them in that personal account. But all the others listed here, you could certainly save those and come back to that at any point in time. You'll notice I'm on the US business database right now. So it's showing this information about the US business database. If you wanted a better understanding of the US historical business information, just click on this more information option here and it will then give you that description. Same thing would be true with healthcare, for example. So it all depends on which module you may have a need to glean a little bit more information about. And these modules have different update periods. So the US Business Database, which we knew we know gets the lion's share of attention, that database is updated every Thursday into Friday morning. So as we're making our verification phone calls to these businesses, you know, no matter where they may be, in the US, as we glean that information from those phone calls, we're pushing that updated information out that Thursday into Friday. So 52 times a year, this is being updated. Whereas the US historical, technically it's being updated after the, or at the beginning of every new calendar year, it'll have been completely updated then. We do push out some updates, like if you were to pull up a, uh, a business record that was updated in, for example, March of this year already, you could find that historical information on that record also from that March standpoint here in the historical uh, information, but the complete update occurs in January of each year. Our Canadian information, this is updated monthly. Jobs and internships, this is updated daily. So we're getting this job and internship information from the uh, relationship we have with Indeed.com. The US new business filings, this information is being updated weekly. We're getting this through the Secretary of State's office from utility hookups, a few of those kinds of, of options. And we, we're adding about 50,000 new businesses a week to this universe. We can typically turn those new business filings if after we've made our verification phone call, we've learned that they've actually opened. Sometimes we'll learn when we contact them that in fact, they don't plan on opening for maybe a few months. So once we have learned that they've opened, we'll give them a full record and put that up here in the US business database. We will archive it though, however, in here, for a year's time. So if we get a filing to, you know, this week for a new business, it'll be in there and th through uh, a year from now. Our US healthcare information, that's being updated monthly as is the consumer lifestyles and the Canadian white pages. Then our US new movers, new homeowners, we're getting that information from our license agreement with the United States Postal Services. And we're updating that every week. So when people fill out that national change of address and they give that to the postman, we're capturing that information every week and making it available here. So let's do this. Let's go into the US business database. And let me explain a few of these screens. So here I have the quick search tab, which is what you'll see whenever you go into any of the modules. In this case for US businesses, you could look at one company record. If you needed one company that you wanted to take a look at, you could get that record for that company in whatever city and state that business may be in. Maybe there was an executive that you knew at a company and that person's no longer there. You could certainly try an executive first name, last name search to see if you can learn about the business that they've gone to. 
And I can look at all businesses across any given city or state and even do a reverse phone number look at look up. One of the tools that I like to show, and I'll just do this from here. We'll just go into San, oops, no, we're not gonna go into San Francisco by using So San Francisco, there's my San Francisco, then I have to grab California, of course. I'm gonna view those results for all businesses and in quick search, it's only going to show me verified businesses, those businesses that we have called. You can imagine we don't reach every business. Uh, so we do have a couple of other universes are unverified and are closed. So this is only going to show you those verified businesses of which across San Francisco, there are some 73,000 plus. The tool I wanna show you is this charts tool. And by the way, this is available in many of the modules. When you select the charts option from this view, when we're looking at an entire city, it's gonna give you the breakdown based on the SIC code. If you're not certain what SIC code stands for, that's the standard industrial classification code. Every business has one. Uncle Sam started that coding system back in the 40s, technically has retired it, although we've made it more granular than it ever was when in use by the federal government. So we've kept it alive. The NAICS codes, again, technically have replaced this SIC code. We have both codes in our records. I could search by NAICS. They're slightly different, as you can imagine. Uncle Sam does change things up a bit, right? So they're slightly different. This stands for the North American Industrial Classification System Code. In this view, it's giving me the top seven SIC codes or that 17,449 businesses across your community. And in the top position are physicians and surgeons. This is often the case in most cities, simply because they're all 1099 guys and gals. They are their own business, even though they might be in with several other doctors. So I have that listing followed by restaurants, then attorneys, dentists, real estate, nurse practitioners, and counselors. But we don't stop at just the top seven. We do give you a full report. Notice we give you the SIC code that they're under, that primary one. Because if you think about it, businesses may do more than just one type of business, right? Manufacturing, for example. Some might be sheet metal manufacturers only. Others may do additional types of manufacturing with sheet metal. So I've got that information listed there. I'll always have that description and then the number of records that apply. Perhaps I have a product that I wanna be able to sell into these beauty salons. I could click on that number of 783 and I can get to that universe. So I'd like to show that charts information because if your business requires you to work with certain types of businesses, bingo, you can get that kind of breakdown really quite quickly. So if beauty salons happen to be one of those businesses that you might want to do business with, you can get to that quite quickly from the charts option. There it comes. It kind of froze there for a second. I can also switch it up to the zip codes that are across your community. I could look at it from a sales volume standpoint, even an employment size. So if you wanted to, you could switch to employment size, it's gonna give you that breakdown. So one to four is that largest universe at nearly 61%, followed by five to nine at 22.5%, at, at 10 to 19, you get the idea. So you can look at any of our records using these charts and the options listed beneath them. And I'll show you that in another example. I'm gonna go back to my results for now though. And I'm going to revise my search. I did that so easily by simply putting in the city and state. 
most of the time people go to advanced search, by the way, additional filters goes to the same place. And they're using those additional filters to instruct the system by saying, I only want business records that match X, whatever X might be. And we give you lots of different ways that you can drive in your information. Company name, the option that I have here versus what I saw with Quick Search, where I could look at one company, this would allow me to look at multiple companies by name. So if you needed that kind of search, you could certainly do that. You can key that in. If IBM were one of those companies, you could add that to your list. If, if Delta were another one of those companies, you could add that to your list. You can add as many companies by name. The one kicker here is the fact that you need to know how that company's name is actually spelled. I helped a, a lady that was looking for a particular business and she was looking for this business in Baltimore. And she had told me that the name of the business was Baltimore Licks, L-I-C-K-S. In fact, when we found it, we didn't find it by company name. When we found it, it was actually called Bmore Licks, but different than Baltimore Licks. So know that you will need to, if you're using this name option, it does need to be spelled correctly. And then you would just simply select whatever geography you need in order to produce those results. Otherwise, we'll always give you the name of the company. We'll always give you this executive information, but maybe you would like to find businesses with an owner present. If that were the case, you could certainly drive that in and just get those records with an owner present. I know that in some cases, people need to be that specific. Same thing could be true with gender or ethnicity. Otherwise, if you don't select this, we'll always provide you this information where we have it. Keyword search is certainly the easiest way to search the system. As it notes here, you can search by any type of business. You could search by restaurants, you could search by hotels, you could search by uh, automobile dealers, new or used. You could search by any type of business that you want and then simply search for that listing once it comes up in the results, you click on it and add it to the selected field. I'll show you this search in a moment. I do like to point out this major industry group. It's just the SIC codes. So when Uncle Sam was managing these codes, they were only a four digit code at maximum length. They were initially broken down by a two digit code as you see here. If you click the plus symbol, which next to whichever category is important, it will then give you a definition for each of those codes. If I needed more information, let's say in regards to general contractors, I could click that plus symbol and there's the four digit code. This was as granular as it would get under general contractors when Uncle Sam was using these codes. We added two more codes to it to get it to this kind of granularity. In fact, earlier this year, I helped my niece find businesses that specifically do water damage restoration because she resides in Dallas, Texas. And when they had that deep freeze last February, her home was damaged by some, some flooding pipes. So she wanted to reach out to those businesses that this is what they do day in and day out. They hang their hat on the fact that they're great at water damage restoration. So we selected this option and also told the system, I want this to be their primary line of business, not something they do on the side or can do. I want this to be the primary line of business that they're in. So then it was just a matter of, we went into the Dallas Metro and found her several options for those kinds of businesses. So no, you can use this stair-step approach 
to get to the kind of data that you may need ultimately to see. Geography speaks for itself. I will show you this map-based search tool. This might be something you would like to use, and this is available in many of our modules. Phone speaks for itself. Number of employees. I mentioned that we asked that question of those businesses when we verify them. How many employees do you have? About 72% of those employers will give us an exact number. Those that don't answer that question, don't choose to answer that question, what we'll do is we'll look at their peers based on the type of business that they're in, because that's another question we ask of them. We'll then look at their peers and we'll assign a range. So when you're looking at one of our records, if you see an exact number, you, we got that in our phone call. You see a range, we applied it because they did not answer that question. And as it relates to sales volumes, we learned a long time ago, you don't ask a private company, by the way, how much money do you think you're going to make this year? Uh, without that, that conversation perhaps going awry. So we do have a team that puts together an algorithm and they use information like the type of business or types of business that that company may be in, how long they've been in business, right? Some differences between year one and year 16 the physical location of that business, because there are variables that we have to account for regarding location, everything from payroll costs and taxes and, and, and power and light costs, et cetera. And then of course, the number of employees, we want that information and use that also in that algorithm, along with some information we get through the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. So we'll always produce this. If it's publicly traded, of course, that sales volume is coming from their 10K. But if it's private, that's always going to need modeled information. And the same is true with business expenditures. Ownership, lots of different ways to look at ownership, certainly public or private. Maybe you need businesses that are only operating a single location. If that were, a, if that were the case, you could certainly drive in those kinds of results. Remember, you get to be the one that says how this ultimately looks and behaves and feels. Also have those home-based businesses. So certainly know that those kinds of records are in the database as well. We'll always give you this financial data where we have that special selects. I know some, in some cases, people want to be able to filter by those businesses that either have or perhaps don't have web addresses. Maybe, maybe their age is important. If it's newer businesses, I would definitely use years in the database, and you could produce just those results. And again, it can be by special type of business, or it can be just businesses in general in whatever geography you might select. So we have lots of ways to show that information. We saw professionals, when we looked at the community of San Francisco, there were lots of doctors and physicians, right? There were lots of attorneys. If you were intending on doing a general search in an area that might include doctors or, or dentists or, or CPAs or attorneys, and you did not necessarily want every attorney in an office, you could switch from the all option to the one professional. We'll give you one primary attorney in that office that you could then mail to. We know that a lot of people will use our data to create mail. So if that's something that you would like to, to do and you're looking at businesses and especially those professionals know that you can change it from all to one, get fewer results and it would cost less money, obviously, doing that mail. So that's available to you. Lots of ways to exclude information as well. You know, maybe you have built a search earlier that you saved in your personal account. And you wanted to produce that again, but you wanted to omit this one and just get the new records added, you could do that. 
perhaps, and I know that a lot of times when people are doing a general search in an area, oftentimes they don't want to see the ATM records that we have for banks. So if ATMs were something that you wanted to leave out, you could search for ATMs. There's my automated teller machines. You could click on that, add that to the selected field. And as long as you've left this in play, you can produce that search maybe for a couple of zip codes or an entire city, maybe a metro area and never see those automated teller machines. And by the way, we also have red box kiosks. So if you didn't want those video rental kinds of kiosks to show up in your results, you could also exclude them. You can exclude any kind of business. We know that there are lots of doctors and attorneys in the San Francisco area. If you wanted to just exclude all of them, you could do that just depends on what you need to be able to produce. I'll go ahead and remove that. We're just going to do a simple search. So when I'm when I think about retail businesses using the database, obviously it's about who are your your customers? Are they are they other businesses or are they consumers? So we're looking at this from a business standpoint. Let's pretend for a moment that you have a product that you want to be able to sell into to restaurants. You could do a keyword search for restaurants as it notes here. And, and notice it does come up automatically on mine because I've done this search so much. You would need to spell it out completely and then search for restaurants. So here's my all-inclusive for all restaurants. Remember, I said Uncle Sam only had a four digit code. We had two additional to make it this much more granular. And notice you can even get to specific types of restaurants. You would just need to scroll through here and notice I get to this related matches. So if I needed just steakhouse restaurants or French restaurants, German restaurants. I could get that specific. Now it's a seven digit code and that's true through the number nine and then we switch it to an alpha. But know that you could get that specific if you needed to. You could also go through here and get to specific chains. So if you wanted to see chain restaurants, you can get to that. Notice that's now a nine digit number. So we've really enhanced these SIC codes so that you, the user, and you don't need to know this code, you just need to know you're looking for Denny's, right? That's all you need, but then you could add that to your list if you so wanted to do it. Otherwise, this is gonna include every kind of restaurant, including Denny's. So then it's a matter of what do we wanna look at for uh, our geography? Let's just do the city. So in, when using the city state option, you would just key in. And again, I've done this so often for the library that it comes up automatically. Normally you would have to key that entire city name in and then select go. So notice I didn't put the state behind there. I just hit go. And then it gives me those two options. Then I select what I need. At that point in time, if I'm done, if I don't need any additional filters from over here, I can just update my count. So there are 3,742 restaurants. Notice I selected restaurants across San Francisco. And right now I'm looking at restaurants using all SIC codes. Watch what happens when I say, uh-uh, I only want to see those businesses that are truly just restaurants. Well, what do you mean, Bill? Why are they just restaurants? Notice it drops it down now to 3,200. What we got rid of are businesses that have restaurants in them, but restaurants isn't their primary line of business. So think about bowling alleys. Every bowling alley I've ever been in has restaurants, a restaurant in it, right? So we've gotten rid of those from our results by, by updating that count and seeing that number has gone down. Now, if I need to get to this audience, I can certainly do so. I can view my results. 
And I could go back and chart this. Maybe I wanna look at this chart and it's gonna default now to the zip code breakdown because I've already told the system, I'm just looking at restaurants, period. So since it's looking at the city of San Francisco, the first breakdown would be the zip codes. So I've got that top seven. And then of course, I've got a full report down here. Notice this is a couple of pages in length. Again, if I needed to get into this group of 149 that's in this particular zip code, I could just click on that number and get to that universe. I could also switch this up to employment size. If that's important to me for whatever reason, maybe I'm selling something that employees would wear, you know, maybe that's important to me. So I could look at that from at that from that standpoint. So again, depending on what I need. Sales volume, maybe that's important to me. I helped a, a lady in, in Orlando, Florida, who was looking at this very uh, specific data because she wanted to be able to print this off. You can print it or make it part of a PowerPoint. She wanted to print this off and show her boss the restaurants that are in Orange County and where they fall at in terms of sales volumes so that her boss would understand what her opportunities are in those various areas. She had access to the entire state to sell her product. But so she was gonna look at like three counties in the immediate Orlando area and, and produce that chart so that she could show that to her employer. I can always get back to my results and I do have another tool that I want to show you. This is a heat map. It's a density map. So it will overlay based on whatever information I chose. It will overlay the density of those locations. So where you see the red areas, lots of restaurants in those areas, where it's more yellow or flushed yellow, fewer, green even less, and of course, where you have these gaps, there aren't any restaurants in those areas. So no, you can also print or make this part of a PowerPoint presentation as well. So these tools, the chart and the heat map, are available in many of the modules that you would have access to through the San Francisco Public Library. You also have, we, we talked about being able to save my search. That's quite easy, right? I do need to register for my personal account first, which of course I have not done through, through the San Francisco Public Library. But once I've done that, I can save that search and come back to it at any time I want. But if I want to download the information, I have the ability to download or print 250 records at a time. So to do that, you would simply put a check mark next to company name in this box. It will grab all 25 records. So 25, in order to be able to get up to 250, that'd be 10 pages. So I can select those 10 pages. and be able to get there. So I'm at six, no, seven, eight, nine, and of course, 10. So there's my 250. I have to stop there. At that point in time, I can select print or download. If it's download, it will always give you, this is the first option, comma delimited which is definitely what you would want to use if you needed to make mailing labels. Maybe you were like that lady in, in Orange County, maybe you were looking to sell to these restaurants and you wanted to be able to send something out to them, some call to action. You could certainly do that and use Comma Delimited to do so. Still drops it into a form of Excel. If the summary being the name, address and phone number for that business plus who that owner or manager is, if we have that information available, we'll always give you that. The number of employees, the sales volumes that they're generating, the 
uh, line of business they're in, et cetera. All of that will then show in this summary. And let me bring that across for you. You should be seeing that now. So there's all of those restaurants and you can adjust these cells later. If you need, let's say that you wanted to be able to download 500, that would be two downloads of 250 each. If that's the case, you could certainly do so. You could save this one in and of itself. Now, mind you, my pages, this is my page. This information is static. I can't add more information to this but I could save it by simply clicking up here in that cell between one and A and copying this information. I could open up my own version of Excel, paste that in there, and then minimize that, come back to this page, close it up. It'll always leave me back here on this instructional page. I just need to select the word back, once I've done that, it will take me back to that 10th page. Now I need to get rid of these check marks. Otherwise, I'll produce the same records again. I don't want to do that. If you select revise search, it doesn't forget how you built that search. I still have that same number of records. I can view my results. It'll take me back in, leaves me on page one all those check marks are gone, then I just need to tell the system, take me to page 11 so I can start downloading more records. And it would be that easy, that quick to be able to download those 500 records uh, in, a, in a pretty short amount of time. And then you could go about, if you have software for mailing labels, you could go about uh, feeding that into your software on your computer so that you could produce those mailing labels. I have a cousin who lives in Gainesville, Florida. He does that very thing, only he's doing it with consumers. He's got a carpet and tile cleaning business. So he'll do that with consumers to try and earn more business, business with consumers getting jobs cleaning their tile or carpeting. So no, you can always do that. I'm going to revise my search again. And I want to show you another tool that's available on any of the records where it would apply. And I think I saw, but it'd be up here on page four, I think. But let's double check. It's going a little slow here. We get, get going here. Uh, I'm looking for a specific type of business. Maybe I need to take that off there and it'll, uh, it'll move faster or maybe not. Uh, I want, I'm gonna revise my search. I think you have these businesses. So I'm going to put in the company name and I'm looking for this company because I like to show their uh, hierarchy. So we'll do Arby's. And we'll do it in San Francisco. There I am and go. There's San Fran. I'm going to update my count. Oh, there are none. Maybe it was in, I could have swore. I remember seeing some of those. Well, we don't, it doesn't have to be in San Francisco. I can show you this anywhere. I've got my Arby's here, and wherever you, whenever you come into our records, you're always going to see this last section that refers to the corporate tree. You can switch this up, by the way, if I wanted to see these executives, I could get that information by title. But I want to look at the corporate tree, so I'm going to leave it with corporate tree, the up arrow will take you to one record and one record only. And that would be for the subsidiary that's responsible for all of the Arby's in this case, or the ultimate parent if there weren't a subsidiary. This will show you their entire organizational flow or chart. So let me open that up. 
So notice Arby's is actually owned by this Rourke Capital Group. It's a private equity company out of Atlanta, Georgia. They have 43 total subsidiaries, almost 40,000 branches across the US. Although we know there's none in, in San Fran, there is a legend that runs across the top here. So if I needed to know what PV stood for, I can quickly identify that that's a private company. If I wanna see these other 42 subsidiaries, I could close or collapse this one and there they are. So I'm sure as you look at that list, you see a lot of those companies that are companies in your community. They just brought on this little company called Dunkin' Donuts, probably about a year ago now. So here are all of the companies that are under their umbrella. So know you can get to that kind of data. And I'm gonna go back to this. Let's go back to this listing of those locations that we have. And let's open this up. This is a typical record. So it's always gonna give you this location information. In this case, it's a little cooler up there. Uh, that's in Anchorage, Alaska. But I'm always gonna have that location information first. Phone information, website and social links would be listed there. Any job openings. I can also get to the corporate information from inside the record. Then I have the industry profile. There's that SIC code that drove in those restaurants. I do have a business profile on this record. So you'll, you'll see that on certainly these kinds of companies. We won't necessarily have a business profile on every single business. This record was last updated in March. And when we contacted them, they told us they had 16 employees at this location. Remember that number is part of what makes up this algorithm that produces then this model number for that sales. Gosh, they've been in our database for a, a few years here. have some hours of operation, some of that management information. Company news. This is where I learned about the fact that Work Capital Group was bringing on Dunkin' Donuts. I learned it in one of these articles. So last time this was updated through Bing was this morning at 6 a.m. And you can even get to older articles by choosing to read more. Stock data, we wouldn't have stock data on a branch. We would only have that on, the, on that parent. Then I have some historical information, including historical records. And notice this goes back to 03. Our historical data was, we began capturing that in 1997. So let's, let's open this record for 2010. You do that by simply clicking on that business name. Notice it does go back to 97. That's when we first started keeping track of that information. And I can use this slide. If I wanted to go back in time or forward in time, I could certainly do so. Just depends on what I might need. I can always get back to my original listing, which is here. And then I have three other sections below this, UCC filing. So if this business had taken out any kind of loan uh, and put something up as collateral, that would be captured there. I would have the nearby businesses because we have that latitude and longitude embedded in the background. And then I would have a listing of competitors, other restaurants in this case. So know that every record is going to be set, set up in a very similar fashion. And I do want to, I've been doing all this talking. I do want to stop for a moment here. Any questions on, on how I got to any of this data or the tools that we've talked about with the charts and the, and the heat map to this point? Any questions?
doesn't look like it, I'll go ahead and continue. Let's, let's do this. I'm going to go back. Get, I can always get back to my original list. I'm going to revise this search. I was just looking at for company names with Arby's. I'm going to do this. We're going to go back to San Francisco. I'll use restaurants again because we know there are plenty in the in the San Francisco area. Let's do this. I'll go restaurants again. Search for that. And again, it can be any type of business. It could be dry cleaners. It could be manufacturers. It could be carpenters. You get to decide what this looks like. Instead of doing the city, I'm going to use the map-based search tool, but I want to add a couple of other qualifiers. I'm going to tell the system I only want to see those restaurants with at least one to four employees or 10 to nine, and I want them to have web addresses. Then I can open my map. So when using this map-based search tool, open it last after you've made your other selections. Here's that map. I select open. Then it'll come up with a, a view of the United States. In the upper left-hand corner, this is where I get to tell the map to, to start searching from. I could be putting in a physical address here along with that city and state. I could be putting in a zip code, county, state. Just depends on how you'd like to build it. Let's just do, we'll do San Francisco. As you can see, I've done that on this search. Otherwise, you wouldn't see this listing of all this. I'm going to say go. Now, the system takes me into San Francisco. I have these options. I can draw my own shape. I could use a true radius. I have some predetermined boundaries. I could even create a drive route if need be. So with drawing a shape, it's really quite simple. You get to start wherever you want to on the map. Let's say that I wanna start right here and I'm gonna forego that area. I'm gonna forego that area. I'm gonna come right down here. I'll come right over here. And what the heck, I'm gonna go out in the water. Maybe there's something, maybe there's a restaurant shown right in here. Uh, I've got 648 restaurants that are in that shape that match my criteria. So certain size with uh, website addresses. If that's all I need, I can say done up in the right hand corner here. And as you can see, I'm ready to give you those 648 results. I'm not quite ready to do that yet though. I do wanna show you, you can alter stuff here as well. Maybe I want to alter this area. And maybe I want to alter this area for whatever reason. So there are 50 results in there. There are eight in here. I can click in these new shapes and choose to exclude those. I helped a gentleman in Tallahassee do this. He worked for a small business development center and he couldn't quite remember how to exclude areas. So I walked him through how to do that. And after we got done, I asked him, what did we just get through excluding? So he was looking at all businesses and his customer, his client was rather superstitious and did not want to uh, cemeteries in the city to show up in the results. So we excluded those from that shape. So no, you can exclude anything. I also have the ability to do a true radius. Both of these options will go out a maximum of 150 miles. So if I wanted to go that far, let's say that I wanted to go over into Oakland here with my true radius. I could say, I want to start here and I could go over into Oakland and Berkeley and, and even get on the other side of the bay. So all depends on what I need. Once I have clicked, held it and drug it away, you can see I'm up to about 14 miles right here. I can let go. And then again, the system will go out and identify in this case, 1,318 results. 
that are in my area. If that's all I need, I would say done and then view those. I also have these predetermined boundaries. Let me go back to this. We'll get that close. The neighborhood functionality isn't functioning right now, but all these others are. I'm just gonna overlay the zips. So there are the zips in the area. And I can click in any zip code I want. So if you needed to look at businesses by zip code, I'll go to this mission district area. So in those two zip codes, I have that 69 and 28. As you can see, I'm ready to go with that number 97. So now you can use those kind of filters as well to drive in your results. And of course, I'm gonna go back to my tools. I also have that drive route. So let's do this. I'm gonna back out here a little ways. We'll do that. We'll go from, I'm gonna create a drive route here. So I'm gonna go from uh, San Francisco. Of course, CA2. And this, I could be putting in a physical address as it notes here, but I'm just gonna go from city to city. So we'll go from San Francisco to San Jose. And I'm still telling the system, I need those restaurants with the X number of employees that have web addresses. Notice it says the buffer distance is a maximum of 15 miles. That's 15 miles on each side of the roadway. So if in fact uh, you needed to look at a drive route and you wanted to find those businesses along that drive route, let's say that I wanna go point four. So four blocks on either side, so a total of eight. There's my route from San Francisco down to uh, San Jose and there are 193 results that match my criteria. If that's all I need, I can say done and view my results. And there they are. I could even go back and, and chart these. Maybe I wanna take a look at these businesses from a sales volume standpoint. That was the only kicker that I didn't include. So notice I'm looking at these restaurants and and they have certain sizes of course have a web address but i didn't consider sales volumes maybe i want to do that bingo now i've got that list so it all depends on what you might need to be able to get to as it relates to to different types of records any questions on any of these tools that I've used on this left-hand column. Remember, we'll always provide you company name, we'll always provide you this, although you may want to use some of these designations as filters, we realize that. Any questions on any of these filters? If not, we'll take a look at some consumer information. I hate how fast time goes by on this. Let's say that- Oh, you I'm, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Hey, we have a question on the chat. Um, Afi is asking, does the service provide API to access data? You know, that question. is something that we sell separately. This, which is being offered through your library, would not have API access, but we do have lots of customers that we work with that need certain types of businesses and they need that information fed to them every so often. We do set up those types of things separately and you can always contact us at that at the 800 number, which is by the way, also at the bottom of every one of our pages. So you could always contact us to find out about that as well. Great question. I'm gonna go ahead and select reference solutions. This is my main navigation option. It's gonna bring me right okay. back here. Bill, oh. there's another question in the chat. Okay. Uh, it's from Dr. Lim who asks, let's say I am a restaurant 
how can I use Data Axle to find local people who may eat at my restaurant? Ah, or let's, let's, or let's, let's say I'm a newly opened car repair shop. How can I use Data Axle to find new people who right? have just moved into my neighborhood? Thank you, Bill. Absolutely. Great questions. Let's do that. Let's, let's focus on the consumer information. And we're getting this information from a variety of sources. So surveys that people have completed, magazine subscriptions, memberships they've joined, purchases they've made. Let's say that you want your restaurant, we'll go with that restaurant option. And I'm going to go right over to advanced search. And I'm gonna open up this lifestyle section right here. So this would be the perfect audience for those people that you may choose to market to about uh, your business. And there's a couple of them that come to mind right off the bat for me. Of course, uh, cooking and wine. Notice if I open up this plus symbol, it's general cooking or gourmet. So if your if your business, let's say that your your restaurant was fine dining, this might be the perfect audience that you could let know about your business. So if that were one that I wanted to go with, bingo, I could do so. Another one that comes to mind is under health diet and fitness. So if you've got those folks that are into general health, which would probably include consumption of food, I could add that audience as well. And if you wanted to also do it with income ranges in mind, you could add them as well. So notice I have everything from under 20,000 all the way up to 500,000 plus. If that were an audience that maybe you wanted to start here at 100 and we'll just go to like 300,000. And instead of doing all per household, I'm gonna do one per household. In other words, I don't want to get three different records at the same address. I just want one for one. Let's do the city again. Is that open up? I opened up right here in front of me. I'm, and there's my, I'll just grab that since it's there. I'll say go, grab that. Now, how many records do I have that match all this criteria? I have a total of 30,454. Well, I'm probably not going to be able to market to that large of a group, right? I might want to make that a little smaller. Maybe I wanna do it by zip codes. Maybe I wanna use the map and draw a shape around my business. All depends on what I might want or need. Let's do this for this purpose. Leah, what's the, what's the zip code there at the library, for example? 94102. 94102. Again, I could be putting my business's address right here. In this case, I'm just going to use a zip code. And I'm going to tell the system, I want to do a radius around this information. Of, I'll do point, excuse me, I'll do uh, 3.5, so three and a half miles. What do I have now for a count? Oh, I still have 19,000. Maybe what I want to do is start carving off some of these estimated home income amounts in order to help reduce that number. You get the idea. Once I have that at a more manageable, you know, I could always change this. Maybe I want to go with 2.5, right? And then update my account. What is that going to do to that number? Drops it down to 8,000. You get the idea. You could always alter that. And then you can view those results. And notice it does state here that any of the telephone numbers, which not as many as there used to be back in the old days with landlines, but any of the telephone numbers displayed should not be used for solicitation. And I would add to that, unless you get a clean list. So you could have us do that 
for you. And we would run that list against the do not call registry and then send you a list you could call against. Of course, there's a fee for that. Or you could download this list and send it to the do not call registry. And of course, they're going to charge you for that cleaning. In any case, you can get a clean list and then be able to call businesses or excuse me, consumers if you'd like to. So know that you can do that. Let's take a look at, we'll look at Daniel's record here. So I have this address information here, gender, everything that we've seen is he's single, been in this home for about 20 years. There's the census information. And then we make some adjustments to that based on when the last census was done. And we'll have our census information updated probably by next month or the following. Then we have the lifestyle interests. So notice he fell into that general health and exercise. So we added that one, making some assumptions that that person would probably want to eat healthy. And if that were the nature of my business, bingo, they'd be a great option to include. Now, I want to go back and explain something now that we've looked at, and that's as deep as the record gets. Now I'm at the bottom, right? So notice these other categories here. I want to go back and explain something so that th that will make sense with those categories. I'm going to revise this search slightly just so I can get back to the advanced search page. So there's a scoring system behind the scenes. It's zero through nine. We will only show you records, these 8,400, records of people who score a six or higher in this category. So we're looking at two categories, gourmet food and wine, general health and exercise. Now, I could add these two together, which would reduce this number some more. So let's do this. I'm going to go under show more options. Instead of any that match, I only want those that they have both of these categories in their records. So I'm going to change this up. It's still going to take into account these uh estimated incomes, and of course, my location. So what does that do to my total? Drops it down to 1,814. Now let's do something. Let's see if Derek still shows up in that list. He wouldn't because I did peek at his record and he doesn't. I did peek at his record before and he wasn't listed in both categories. So these people are listed in both of those categories. And let's take a look at this one. So I've got general cooking along with gourmet food and wine. That was the one we selected along with general health and exercise. So that was how I was able to manipulate that data and get it down to 1800 records by including that kicker that they have to qualify in both categories health and uh, general health and exercise, as well as gourmet food and wine. We could go back and do another search for, let's say, uh, cultural arts. And this record may not show up because they don't score in that six to nine range. So remember that six to nine is what's important here as well. So I have that kind of information that I could use for my restaurant. I also, Let's say I've got that business and I want to know about those new people who've moved into my community. I'm going to use that same zip code, 94114, and I'm going to go to my reference solutions, my navigation page, and you mentioned new people. Here's my new homeowners and movers. I'm going to open up this one. Again, go right to advanced search. And I'm gonna tell the system, here's what I need it to do. Consider move distance and time frame. So let's say I don't wanna know about people who've moved across town, right? I wanna to give it, a, I, wanna, 
I want the starting point to be out there a little further. Maybe it, I don't want to include those from, from uh, Oakland either. So let's say that I'm going to go 45 miles as my starting point, and I'll go 2,800. Notice it always defaults to the last six months. It could be as recent as last week or within the last year. Let's say that your threshold is the last three months. So how many people have moved into, and we're just going to put in this zip code, 94114. Do I have any new people that have moved from at least 45 miles away up to 2,800 miles away in the last three months into that zip code? I don't have any in the last three months. Let's push that out. We may have gotten it a little too narrow with that particular zip code. I'll go all the way out to a year. Not that people haven't moved into that area, but not from this distance. Hey Bill, did you want the did you want nine four one one four in the zip? Oh, and here yeah. I did nine five. Yeah, That's yeah. why. Oh shoot! Thank you. Uh, great catch. I was, I was, I did that on purpose just to see if anybody was paying attention. Excellent job. So here's what those records are going to look like. Again, we have that same do not call information. But rarely do I see phone numbers listed here because it's it's that document that they filled out for the postal service, and rarely do people put a phone number on there. So let's go with Elijah here. I've got the address information right here. This person moved from 898 miles away to come into that area. Then I'll have the neighborhood information, meaning that census information, and then some of that estimated household income. We also include this uh, estimated age that we're getting through the Census Bureau as well. So that's the extent, but this is somebody that's new to that area. In fact, let's do this. Let's add another. I did this, I think, at the last, I did the last year. Let's do last three months again. What does that give me? So now I have 172 of those. Now let's say that my business was actually, uh, maybe I sell renters insurance. How many of this group of 172 are renters? 64 of them, that's 64 new leads that I didn't have before. And again, I could download this information all in one download because I, I can do uh, 250 at a time. I could download all of that information and send this group perhaps a mail or a mail piece about my business and that I'd like to earn their business. Hey, Bill, there's a question too about like um, uh, emails, like you showed the example about the restaurants and oh sure, and the, and the telephone numbers were there. And the question was, do you offer email addresses for those same? We, yeah. Yep. Yep. So we don't put the email addresses out on the on the database. You can imagine with all of the libraries across the country that have access to our information. If we had businesses and or people's email addresses out there, those email addresses would be you know, sour overnight. Uh, so we do sell those. You can always reach out to us at, again, this contact information and find out about being able to acquire that information. So here's that record for this person that came from 2,500 miles away to move into San Francisco and they're a renter. So if that kind of insight helps you, know that you can get that as well. Great for using for your, for your business. And, and, and doctor, maybe you're interested in being able to identify those new people to your community because you're looking to build your practice. Great tool for that. Any other questions? We've gone a, a might longer than we were originally scheduled for, but I'm open to answering any questions.
Leah, nothing there? Uh, just a logistical, someone asking when they're gonna get the recording. Um, we'll, I'll send it out today at some point. Sure. Well, very good. Then we'll conclude now. You can certainly always contact the library or feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to assist you with uh, any kind of search that you were doing within the database. All right, well, thank you so much, Bill, for another great presentation. And again, if you have questions for Bill, you can email him directly. You gave them your email, correct? You know, let me do this. Let okay. me go to the chat here and I'll just put my email address right there. Uh, you're also welcome to email the department, his side tech at sfpl.org. Um, we're happy to answer your questions too. So bill.carlson at, oh, I didn't get it to everybody, did I? My bad. Leah, how do I change that up so I can send that to everybody? It looks like I just oh, sent it. it. Bill, uh, what is it? Bill.carlson at? Bill.carlson at data hyphen axle.com. I think I, yeah. Yep, yep, that's it. And our, for Data Axle, our email address is right here, reference at data-axle.com. Absolutely. All right, well, thanks to all of you for attending and uh, learning more about one of our very powerful databases. And thank you, Bill, for another great presentation. Thank and we'll you. see you next month, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.